What's going on everybody? We're back in Florida and it's warm and sunny and nice. But we're here. I gotta get the garage all situated again. I've had the I brought in all my tires and stuff before we uh shot back up to PA last week. But it's time to jump back in to the Drift V and continue making progress on this thing. So I have a list of things that I need to get done this week and um, relatively small things, but you know, big things in the grand scheme of things. And then um, I'll just touch on a couple little updates and things that we're gonna try and get done in the coming weeks. So you guys saw how we left it. You know, it's fully assembled. It looks good. I have uh, some of the coolant lines ran. I'm not completely done with like the steam fittings and this upper rad hose because I am gonna end up taking the rad out one more time. But in the mo in how it sits right now, it does start. It does not idle. I mean, that's because of the cam and the tune and all that. But I do have an oil leak from the plate and I think the AN lines, one or the other for the oil cooler down the side of the block. I was planning on dropping the headers anyways because of uh, the fact that I wanna wrap them where I can, like on the top sides, uh, not so much down towards the bottom, but put a little bit of header wrap on them just to keep some some heat out of the engine bay. And then while the, the, the driver's side header is out, I will uh, fix that oil leak on the oil cooler plate, whatever the oil is leaking from, whatever spot. Uh, cooling system. I have the line right here. I have this side capped and I have this line right here that goes around and around the back, go over to the stock expansion tank right over there. So we're good with that. I need to finish the uh, line that goes from the steam port right here and jump it out to right here. Uh, and then basically other than putting the upper radiator hose on the cooling system is completed. Uh, and then I need to run vacuum lines. So. I have a port right here from the valley cover, so the valley cover vent, and I have this little port in the intake manifold right here. I have this spot right here on the throttle body, and I have this spot right here on the valve cover. So I think what I'm gonna do is either go valve cover. So on the V, I have uh, this, this one right here goes into the intake, and I don't really get much residue out of there because because uh, I don't know, the baffling is good in the valve cover. I don't know, I don't have a lot of blow by, but the valley cover, I do collect a good amount of oil. So this one will not recirc right into the intake. This one will go from uh, here into a catch can and then from the catch can into either um, this guy right here or the throttle body side. So I'm thinking, depending on what is an easier bend to make from here to here or from the valve cover to up here, whatever looks cleaner is where that'll go to. And then the valley cover side will just go into the spot behind it um, in the intake manifold. So what I have is a catch can that came in uh, while I was gone. And it's just a two port baffled catch can. It looks oddly familiar to a Mishimoto one that, you know, costs $135. Yet this one seemed to have cost me much less, like more than a quarter of what the Mishimoto ones go for. And it is the exact same thing inside and out. So either way, um, I need to find a good spot to put this catch cam. I was kind of thinking of tucking it back there behind the headlight if there's enough space and then having the, the lines just come out and head on over to the engine. And uh, when I open it, it'll just be a matter of popping the bumper off, which will be easy on this car and popping the headlight out to drain it, but I don't know, or I'll go lower. I don't really know where it's gonna be. I wanna find a spot that's tucked away on the red V or on the black V. I have it just kind of like sitting here, but the LS2 cars don't have this box right here with all the plugs. So there's a little more space like right here to uh, put the catch can. And there's really no good spot for me to attach it if I wanted to sit it here. So the catch can will be installed and then I need to get the LS2 injectors back in. All right guys, I'm interrupting this video from Mike from the future is jumping back here and we're interrupting. I just wanna remind you, hit the like button down below. It really helps out all that jazz. So hit that thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell button as well while you're at it. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. So I have a theory and I may be 100% off, but the car won't idle because the cam is bringing in a lot more air and the injectors aren't spraying enough fuel because it's a stock 28 pound injectors. Whereas I have the LS2 injectors, which are a larger injector. And um, my theory is that 
It'll still be pulsing the injectors the same, but these will spray more fuel and maybe the car will be able to find idle. I don't know if that's gonna be the case, but um, if I would, I would like to have the car be able to find some sort of idle before I get it tuned, because it'll make life a lot easier getting it to the dyno, basically. So I gotta get these guys put back in, so that's on the list of things to do. And then I need to get brake lines hooked up on this thing as well in the front and in the back. I don't have any calipers on in the rear because of the dual, I was test fitting dual caliper bracket stuff, but I need to get the front ones hooked up and I'll get the calipers back on the rear and we'll uh, get the system bled and get it all sorted because uh, I need to be able to stop. So I'm hoping that fixing the oil leak, I gotta bleed the clutch a little bit more, but fixing the oil leak, bleed the clutch some more. Um, Wergs ordered me a bunch of redline fluids for it. So I gotta put redline fluid in the trans and I ordered like some water wetter and whatnot and uh, bleed the brakes so the car stops and get this thing to where nothing leaks and everything works. I'm soon gonna be jumping on to ordering uh, coilovers and finalizing my suspension. Uh, I, I'm gonna hold off on letting you guys know where the route I'm going for coilovers until I finalize it, but uh, coilovers will be coming soon and I need to finish the rev shift bushings on the driver's side. So all the, all the suspension bushings on the driver's side need to get done. So my goal is to, once the suspension is done, once the brakes are done, cooling system's done, and everything is good on the engine, uh, my goal is to basically get it ready to be tuned. Next step will be getting this thing tuned and uh, getting, you know, make some power, make this thing run and have it just be good to go. That way I can finish the dual caliper setup and basically just start saving money for the roll cage and the um, seats and then finish all the rear suspension stuff. So once that's all done, we'll drop the rear subframe and we'll do um, the control arms, we'll do the subframe bushings and all of that. I'll use my uh, fuel line quick release tool here and basically just put it in, press the line up and basically just, whoa, work it off. We are still a little pressurized there. So we got the um, injectors all back in, LS2 injectors installed with the ICT built adapters. Now, if I, uh, just a reminder, what, what had happened was I was getting injector leaks from the O-rings when I had these in initially. And ICT billet said that the, even though the ones they, they supplied O-rings to go in, I needed to order the LS3 O-rings. So I ordered the OEM LS3 O-rings to go on top of the injector into the adapter and uh, reassembled it. We are nice and tight. I noticed with the old O-rings, I could actually like wiggle the injectors in there and they're a lot tighter in there right now. So um, I got the feed line all hooked back up right here and we're basically hooked up how we were before. And I'm just gonna turn the key on, let the fuel system prime and uh, see if there's any leaks from the injectors. And if there isn't, we're good. So let's, Get under here, had this thing all covered up so it didn't get too covered in dust. But we'll key on. And uh, wait for that dash to turn on. <laughs> With the injector, the fuel pump to turn on. So, just taking a, a look around down here. This injector right here was one of the ones that was leaking. I'm gonna take a look back there. And it looks like there was some, a little bit of a pool of gasoline in there from when I took the injectors out. But it looks like we are good to go. And I give the, give the rail a little shimmy. It doesn't move at all and we're good. So swapping out those supplied ICT billet O-rings with the OEM LS3 O-rings did in fact solve my problem. So moving on to the next thing. I'm trying to decide if I want to do cooling system, 
uh, little like cooling lines. I need to go to the store to buy some more, which maybe I'll do that after work. And then we got catch can and we got uh, the headers and all that. But I think the headers we're gonna save for another video. So we'll do cooling system and catch can in this one. Um, power steering system is all good. I got that all bled out. Uh, I was taking in a bunch of fluid as I was going. I got, you know, lock to lock, bled the whole system. We're good to go with power steering. We got our big cooler in the front, which I still need to make a, a better bracket for because the bracket that I had uh, now gets in the way of the oil cooler. So we're making progress, making progress. We're getting there. Um, I ended up, call me crazy, you, may have, you might've seen it flying around in a time lapse, but I literally printed out a monthly calendar and uh we didn't get into may yet too a little still too a little too far out for may but i basically what i did in order to pace myself and not get overly burnt out with this thing and just you know to stay on a on a schedule i listed out week for week what needs to get done so um we were in pa this whole week and i only had to redo what i just did reinstall the ls2 injectors um knowing that i needed a break and a break i got but you know we got some stuff to finish here and then uh, by this week our fluids will be here and we'll be able to iron out all the fluids and uh dual caliper week i'm excited for that one uh, that'll be a good week to get everything sorted with the dual caliper bracket and then uh, we'll be finishing our suspension. Now, obviously, you know, some of this stuff will get done sooner because we have the weekends and whatnot, but I just wanted to plan like a rough uh, target to meet. Because with these builds, it definitely is easy to one, lose track of time, lose track of the end goal, and uh, two, just to get burnt out, and which has happened to me. And it happened to me after getting the engine in and fighting and fighting to get it to run. I was definitely feeling the effects, but, uh, Thankfully, I was able to take a break. We went home and I was able to step away from it for a little while. So let's jump into the catch can stuff now and uh, try and get that in the cooling system wrapped up. I'm gonna run to the parts store to get the hose that I need and we should be good to go. All right guys, so it's a couple days later. I'm jumping back into it. I've been bouncing back and forth, but I haven't really been putting much time in on the car the last couple days. But I'm gonna update you because I have done a couple little things. Earlier you saw, Got the fuel injectors in. We're good there. Then I ran the line here to the T. Then I got the vacuum lines coming from the throttle body to the valve cover and from the valley cover to the intake manifold. And they are gonna come down here into this catch cam. Now the catch can, like I mentioned, I found a spot. It's gonna be below the headlight, but it's out of the way. I can actually access it from just reaching underneath the headlight and unscrewing it or just emptying the drain valve, opening the drain valve there. So that'll be out of the way. It's out of the engine bay. There's really no reason for it to be in the engine bay. And like I said, it had to be on this side because of the angle of everything. And of course, this is the busiest corner. Whereas over here, we got like nothing but an air filter. So we're good there. I just refilled the transmission with some, I did the T56 cocktail, which is two quarts of Redline MTL, two quarts of D4 ATF from Redline as well. So we are good to go there. Shout out Wergs for hooking it up with the turn 14 parts. And then I also put this NRG quick release in. I was struggling with having enough, uh, getting the steering wheel close enough to me. And granted, it's just a stock seat, but I definitely needed it out further than sitting right here. So I ordered the NRG quick release to give me um, probably about three inches, I'd say, of uh, moving the steering wheel forward. And I've never had an NRG quick release, release. Let me try and pull it off with one hand here. There we go, it pops off. And then I like it because, you know, it has its center point and you just kind of put it on spinning it locks so i have a splined quick release on the 3000 over there and i don't like it it has slop and whatnot with the splines this nrg has a tiny tiny bit of movement but it's way neater than that splined quick release that i have on the 3000 and that was the same thing for the 3000 like i really don't ever take my steering wheel off but i basically needed the steering wheel moved closer to me other than that, I just hooked up the passenger side front brake line. I will be pulling this wheel off to hook that brake line up. And I think the last thing I need to do before we jump to the back of the car is pull these headers. So one, hopefully one last time, I'm gonna pull them out, 
and I'm gonna fix my oil leak. It's coming from the 1AN line. I can kind of see it, but I can't get a wrench there without dropping the header. And I pulled the header, I'm gonna pull the headers and wrap them with some heat wrap and then put them in hopefully for the last time. And I really wanted to start the car again after putting the LS2 injectors in to see what happens, but I haven't been able to because I don't wanna keep pissing oil out of that uh, housing. Oh, I also figured out my oil cooler issue here. So I moved the brackets over. I am gonna be making another one of these. I bought a long section, so I'm gonna cut another one out and redrill all the final holes. So I'm not too worried about these guys right here. And I am gonna be trimming these L brackets up a little bit better to fit, but I have my oil cooler offset now towards the passenger side and it clears the power steering cooler. I am gonna, you know, refine this bracket a little bit. So ignore how it looks right now, but that's basically the general idea of where it's gonna sit. So we're good with the coolers in the front and it also took up a lot of the slack on these AN lines. So I should be able to just tie these up and get them up higher. Obviously my goal is to get them like as high as the bottom of the rad so that they don't hit anything. But I think we're good. We're good there. We're good just on the front end of the car. Everything is good. So I'll lower down the hood and you guys can see. And everything is flush behind the bash bar where the bash bar will mount and out of the way and contained and looking nice. Closing the hood just now also reminded me that I need to order hood pins. I'm gonna do like an aero catch pin so that it'll be flat and flush and uh, it'll mount like probably like here or here, just on the original rad support. Probably try and utilize like this hole uh, or this hole, the little bump stop uh, so that we can uh, get some nice air catch hood pins in here. So uh, I'm gonna get to work. I'm gonna try and loosen these headers off the block and get them ready to drop off the car and we'll jump back in. So I mentioned, I don't know if I even mentioned it at this point. This video has been so many days put together into one video. So if you guys are still here, thank you for watching. But what I ended up doing was routing the vacuum lines down behind the headlight. You can see down there, I have a catch can right here. And this catch can basically is below the headlight, out of the way, and we're all good. I ordered some adapter fittings for it and Amazon lost them, delivered to them to another house and I was leaving today to go to the gym and I noticed a bag that was cut open and laying in my driveway and someone on my street or someone someone somewhere got my Amazon package and just decide to see what was in it before actually dumping it on the driveway. I guess they didn't need some hose fittings. So we're all done with the vacuum side of things. I still am gonna toss a clamp on this one and then on the other side of it back on the intake manifold, but we're pretty much good. Um, ignore this whole thing. I had a theory that I was trying with a uh, cutoff switch with a pull cable on the wiper cow and I don't like it at all. Um, I made a template for this little panel here that has the circuit breaker and the distribution block and the cutoff switch. What I'm actually gonna do is order a different cutoff switch. And I think I might mount the cutoff switch like up here in the fender. There's a lot of space in here behind the battery. I can get up in there. So I'm thinking to have a positive cable come from the, right from the battery over into the cutoff switch in the fender and then have it come back around the front here into this circuit breaker and this um, distribution block on it. I'm gonna remake this panel using uh, thicker steel and uh, then it'll get rid of this little overhanging piece which was kind of getting in the way. So that was just a whole experiment. So ignore that for now. And uh, otherwise we're pretty much good. I ended up wrapping the headers yesterday so they're wrapped. I was mainly focusing on wrapping the section of the headers that's in the engine bay. Once it gets down past the engine bay, like past the frame rail, it doesn't really matter to me. There's nothing down there that it's gonna harm. And if anything, like if, I get, if I'm drifting in the rain or whatnot, I don't want the header wrap getting super wet because it holds moisture and it could cause some corrosion issues even though these are stainless steel. So new spark plugs are in, the TR6 plugs. You can see down there or not, I don't know. So the headers are gonna go back in. Um, later today, I am going to do another clutch bleed with Morgan. And once the clutch bleed is complete, then I think the headers are good to go back on for hopefully the last time. Keep my fingers crossed. 
and then I will get the plug wires back on, the coil packs ignition components back on, and we'll get this thing back on the ground once again. And I think from there, I think, I think, I think, I will be able to do some finalizing with the cooling system. So get this top rad hose on and get some water in here. I'm skeptical about putting on my water wetter that I have in just yet because I'm sure I'm gonna have to pull that rat out again. So we'll see. <laughs> back on we got the steam port here all hooked up we're all plumbed up here sounds like we got some water in the upper hose took about a little over i'd say about three gallons i'm sure it'll take some more but we were filling it up and it just kept dropping and one of the nice things about not running a thermostat is that it makes bleeding a lot easier i can just basically squeeze the upper and lower hose and it's moving mo um, water throughout the entire engine just a reminder what i use if i can find it i use these moroso coolant restrictor plates um, so you can select different sizes to speed up and slow down how fast the coolant is moving through your system. I have the blue one in, which is the middle size between the two of these. So we'll see if that one works. You know, it's easy enough to change these if I wanna um, change it up. And it's also easy enough just to go back to a thermostat. So we have options. So I'm all ear plugged up. I'm gonna try and give this thing a start. And uh, it's the first time starting it with some water in it. And we'll see what happens. This is also with the LS2 injectors untuned. And um, I did crank it last night. It tried to find idle, um, but I don't really expect it to find idle long. It found it idled longer than it did with the LS6 injectors. I will say that, but let's give it a shot. Well, I fired quick there. Own. We're finally getting there. This video was a lot of just cleaning up odds and ends around the engine bay and whatnot. So, you know, it's all part of the bill. It's all part of the bill. So once again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for following this build. I also have an exciting announcement that will be coming, but I'm waiting for the stuff to get here. So we partnered up with um, a brand that a lot of people know and a lot of people work with. And it's just a really, it's a good brand family that I'm excited to be part of. So um, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, drop a comment below if you're still here and I'll see you guys in the next one.